whatever y'all do, whatever y'all say, it doesn't matter no more. Y'all need to pack that nigga Biden up. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all might as well pack that nigga up, bro. Peace and blessings to everybody out there. Welcome back to the Fake Folk Podcast. This is your boy, Bobby Villain. I am back with another video. I've been on the hiatus. About a three-month hiatus. Honestly, I wasn't thinking about really making any content uh anytime soon especially with youtube doing the bullshit that they do all the goddamn time took down another video now i got another strike now i can't now i can't post any videos on youtube same shit different toilet flush it's all good though it's all good we back anyway back with another video another installment we're gonna talk about the debate um, that happened yesterday. Um, I was able to watch a good amount of the uh, of the debate. I would say I watched a decent amount. Um, so far, it went how. Um, it went how I assumed it was gonna go. Um, I felt like. I felt like Trump was going to um, dominate the debate. Um, and he did. He did exactly what I thought he was going to do. Um, but I thought Biden meds would have kicked in a little bit better. Because boy, oh boy, was his ass getting roasted. He was getting his ass hooked. And... I didn't, I expected it to be one-sided, but I didn't expect it to be like that. I didn't expect for Biden's dementia to really kick in how it did. And now, when you go and you could go and you could watch the whole debate or you could watch the clips throughout the whole debate, Biden was stuttering he wasn't cognitive he didn't know what he was talking about it was not a pretty sight for him this was not a debate for that man to even participate in he shouldn't even been in the crowd because it was completely one-sided dude i'm sorry to keep reiter reiterating that but it was completely one-sided it was a massacre. He started, like, Biden started to, like, you know, get his footing a little bit. But then I think it was right, right around the time when they started talking about the border. And I think Biden sat there and he said that the CBP or the uh, the Border Patrol uh, backs him. And, and then next thing you know, I look at my timeline, the Border Patrol, the official page for the Border Patrol says they do not support Biden. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And it's funny because I sat there and I made a post on my Instagram um, basically talking about how, um, basically talking about how um, the media is manipulated and the la how the last election was definitely manipulated because I did a video on how the last election was ma uh, manipulated, several videos on that, actually. Um, but the most recent one is right here, actually. Let me go um, to my page real quick. Sorry to get distracted. Let me go to my page real quick, bro. Uh, which one was it? Because it was right here. It was this one right here. The Fake Woke Podcast, The Secret History of the Shadow Campaign. If you did not watch this video, which it looks like none of y'all watched that video. 
if you haven't watched that video, go watch that video. And I explained how uh, the left, or shall I say Democrats, manipulated the election in order for them to win the election. You, you get it? So if you would have paid attention to the presidential, the presidential uh, debates four years ago, three and a half years ago, you would have known that Biden wasn't there. You would have known that Biden wasn't a good pick if you actually believe in this dual party bullshit system that we have, you know? Even though I feel like this system does not work, I still somewhat entertain the idea because there's people out there that actually believe this shit works. They actually believe that these politicians have our best interest. They have yet to break free from the political theatrics of this company we call America. People haven't woken up yet. And I don't, don't want to use that. I'm not going to say woken up. People haven't unplugged from the matrix. People think they unplugged from the matrix. They haven't unplugged from the matrix. Because if you could sit there and you could wake up and you could tell yourself you're choosing between the lesser of two evils when it comes to Trump and Biden, you don't know the half of it yet. If you really think that this system works, you have a long way to go. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant. I'm not saying that to be snarky. You just do not understand how this corporation works. And a lot of people might be confused by me using the term corporation or labeling this nation as a corporation. This was never really a country. This was a social experiment that just so happened to work. And then before it uh, actually became a country country, they turned it into a corporation. Or right when it, I should say, right when it was on the verge of truly becoming a country, 1913, that's when it was turned into a corporation. That's when it was just fueled off of printing money, running up wars, and fucking over the citizens. Excuse my French. But I gotta talk. I gotta, I gotta actually, I gotta actually speak from the heart this time, because it seems like there's a lot of people out there that just didn't, that that don't get it. And I'm not about to keep telling you. I told you this. I told you this because people don't want to hear that. Y'all would rather see it than have somebody tell you before it happens, and then you act surprised when the shit happens. So we are gonna keep that. We are gonna keep that going. But I'm going to get back to the topic. We're going to talk about this debate for a little bit. I'm going to show you a couple of clips. Not necessarily from the debate. But from the co commentary. And this is how you're going to know. That it does not look good for Biden. And I'm going to give you my personal opinion on that. A little bit. After these clips. Okay. So we're going to restart this bad boy. Everyone. He goes through six days of preparation at Camp David. More than that. And they know the rules. more than a week. Okay, they, and so more than a week. They know the rules. He practices with the mics. He knows every one of these questions is coming. And yet he couldn't fill the time. Now, they, I, I just want to, let's see what the White House is saying. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Biden knew what questions were coming. Biden already had the questions. Biden already had the answers. And he was still fumbling. He was still fumbling. That should tell you something. Sources close to the White House are saying he had a cold, wasn't feeling well. I mean, as you would expect, that came out. Of Look at him running excuses up. Look at them running excuses up. They're running these excuses up, man. 
Muscatine. Early on in the debate. But what accounts for someone with so much experience doing so much I, preparation I think, and this I being think, the outcome? Honestly, I think the question answers itself. He wasn't capable of doing any better than he did. He goes through six days of preparation at Camp David. More you said, you heard what he said. He wasn't capable of doing better than what he already did. They knew that man was was uh, had a was having a cognitive decline, and they still forced his ass out there. You've seen it, truly seen it right before your eyes. The last year and a half of his cognitive decline and y'all still choose to usher this man out there like he's actually going to win y'all the election and this is why i was telling people i feel like democrats is about to throw this election because it makes no sense for you to usher this man out there and not only that you couldn't pivot and use kamala because the dnc don't even like kamala let alone the actual citizens that pay attention does not like Kamala. Kamala's only job is to pander to black people. And she's barely doing that right. She had another job to protect the border. And you see how that turned out. Let's continue. Hold on. Their campaign has been trying to paint a, you know, one of the things was would either candidate look like the caricature that the other campaign has been trying to paint of him. And at the end of the day, Joe Biden looks like the caricature that that conservative media has been painting. Uh, and there were no clips tonight. Right. This was you saw it before your eyes. Look, I, I'm I don't want to just tell you. That's what I was saying. In real time. Watching this debate live. You saw Biden fumble on many questions while already having the questions in front of him, while already having the answers in front of him, and he still couldn't properly answer. What I think here, um, Tom, I, I've been talking to a lot of leaders in the Democratic Party, electeds, um, coalition leaders. There's a full-on panic about this performance. They're panicking. Do I necess do I really believe that they're panicking? No, not necessarily. Like I stated earlier, I feel like they're throwing this election because they ain't got nobody else. They don't have anybody else. And anybody that, that they roll out. Trump is going to devour the same way he did Biden. Performance. Um, not like, oh, this is recoverable. It is more of a, okay, um, he's got to step aside. There's a lot of that chatter. Um, this is this is about as bad of a of a performance in order to uh, that Biden could have delivered uh in if his goal was to try to sort of calm the waters among Democrats. I mean, look, there was, you know. He didn't calm any waters. Matter of fact, I think right before the debate, and this is how I knew for a fact, they weren't confident in, in Biden's, um, 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 in Biden as a candidate because they went to their typical calling card in order to engage black people into voting, they're getting the rappers to come co-sign. They're getting, they about to get the athletes to come co-sign. You about to see these sports analysts like the Stephen A's come and co-sign for Biden. If they get the call, if they, if that check clears, because let's be honest, you really think these celebrities are co-signing these politicians without getting, receiving a check? A lot of these niggas, excuse me, a lot of these people and a lot of these celebrities that you that you see co-signing these Democrats, they don't they don't really they don't really side with them like that. Like, why would you vote against 
this is just me personally. Why would you vote against a party that will save you money? I'm, I get it. Not everything's about money, but at the same time, like if you understand how the economy works and how everything works in your favor when you make more money, you go with the people that's going to give you the most tax uh, tax cuts within your bracket. Not saying that the Democrats don't do it; they do. They give the rich tax uh, uh, tax cuts, but they don't vocalize it. The Republicans is going to tell you, like, "Hey, we we got you. Just vote for us. We're gonna cut. We're gonna cut y'all some. We're gonna cut y'all some money." The Democrats give out tax cuts for the for the rich. They do. They absolutely do. They just don't advertise it. They claim they're the party for the poor, and they really not the party for the poor. Matter of fact, they want to keep the middle class poor in order for you to keep voting for them because that's the illusion that they're selling you. They want you to think that they're for the poor when all actuality, they're trying to get rich off of you. Let's continue. Hold on. I got a political this. appointment, you know, and I'll tell you something. Yes. And I'll tell you something. I wish he was a great president because I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be at one of my many places enjoying myself. I wouldn't be under indictment because I wouldn't have been his political appointment, you know, a, opponent because he indicted me because I was his opponent. I wish he was. And that's exactly why he got indicted. Because he was running. Because they knew Biden can couldn't compete on a regular foot on a regular setting with Donald Trump. So the whole case with the, with Stormy Daniels that was already settled and everything like that all of a sudden comes back up and now all of a sudden he's been charged with that. Several other in indictments. They was doing that for this man to spend his campaign money. Which would have been a clever trick four years ago when he was already in office. But what you did was, and this is absolutely true, you made him more appealing. And I think he said it himself. And I, I forgot how he worded it. But you unjustifiably if that's even a word, <laughs> you, you unjustly, that's what I meant to say, <laughs> you unjustly charge this man with a whole, whole bunch of bullshit because it is bullshit, a whole bunch of bullshit charges to get him to spend his campaign money because you thought it would give you an easier shot at the, pres at, at the presidency. You thought you was going to be a sure reelected uh, re official. But it turned and it backfired on you because it actually did make him a little more relatable to black folks. And it's not because it's not because these Republican media pundits want to sit there and paint black people as criminals. It's because black people get unfairly treated in the justice system. We've experienced this shit before. We know this shit, and that's why a lot of black people, black people that actually get this shit, actually want him to win. And 50 Cent said it best. When they asked him why, why, why is the support amongst black people, black men in particular, is rising for Trump, he said it best because only black people receive RICO charges. I ain't never seen a white a white person receive a fucking RICO charge. Even when the Proud Boys got apprehended, that was not a RICO charge, if I'm not mistaken. Even though that was a multicolored coalition, quote unquote. But you get where I'm going with this. Continue. He's a great president. I would rather have that. I wouldn't be here. I don't mind being here. The only reason I'm here is he's so bad as a president that I'm going to make America great again. We're going to make America great again. We're a failing nation right now. We're a seriously failing nation. And he's not lying. We are a failing nation. And we are going down very, very fast. And we're a failing nation because of him. 
His policies are so bad. Bro. 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 Why I look like this man about to fall asleep on the stage? Look at this man. Zoned out. Not even there, bro. Here's what I was talking about earlier. Well, endorsed me, endorsed my position. We significantly increased the number of asylum officers. Significantly, by the way, the Border Patrol endorsed me. Endorsed bro, you hear it in his speech. The slurred speech. The fumbling of the words. The man is not equipped for this. He wasn't equipped the last four years. His administration is running him ragged. And if it's true, if this man really did shit himself and y'all still trying to roll him out, bro, elderly abuse. Of my position. In addition to that, we find ourselves in a situation where when he was president, he was taking several... Bro. And... And it keeps, and it's, it keeps getting worse. It's going to continue to get worse if y'all don't get this man out of office, bro. Let's continue again. This, uh, this is a one minute clip though. The, after his performance, uh, it has really set off panic. Uh, there was one Democratic congressman I was in touch with who was on Capitol Hill at a watch party with a number of other lawmakers. And that moment uh, early on in the debate where President Biden was talking about the national debt and seemed to lose his train of thought, uh, paused for several seconds, and then gave uh, a confusing answer. Uh, he said that when that happened, the entire room was just completely silent and in shock, and that this member's own reaction was that he wanted to jump off of a bridge. Uh, and he said that throughout the course of the 90 minutes of the debate, uh, he and the other lawmakers in the room felt like Donald Trump looked young, and Joe Biden looked uh, old and that Donald Trump seemed to mostly be on the offensive and that uh, Joe Biden seemed to be mostly on the defense. He wasn't even on defense, bro. He was getting torched. How Luca was getting torched in the finals. That's exactly how Joe Biden was getting torched. There was no defense. He was playing no defense. His ass was a grass. As Kendrick Lamar, the great Kendrick Lamar said, Trump was out there whooping feet. Just how Tank had Frank Martin on his back foot. My God, my God, Trump, Trump had Biden on his ass, actually. Trump put Biden on his fucking pockets. Let's continue. Uh, Democrats, he said, are just panicked right now and don't even know uh, what to do. I mean, these are some really devastating reviews for a Biden campaign that really wanted to use tonight to dispel this notion that President Biden is too old for a second term. And he is absolutely too old to be president. Me watching Biden try to respond to those questions made me realize that this nigga only had 2% battery left in the tank. This nigga's about to be obsolete, bro, if you understand what I'm saying. And I hate to say it like that, and I hate to drop the end bomb, but he's about to be obsolete. He got one foot in and one foot out, and it don't look good. And I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm being honest. I'm just being honest. And Kamala knew. The media knew. They knew about his cognitive decline, bro. But they still ushered his ass out there. And that's that's horrible. And like against Trump. And Trump was really the worst person you, you can try to argue with. Because he gonna hit you with a bunch of side notes. And he throwing shots at people. That's not even there. That's the worst nigga to argue with. That is the worst nigga to argue with, bro. Here's another one. Oh, wait, I'm not about to play that. That's a little too, that's a little too young. But y'all get what I'm saying, man. Y'all get what I'm saying. It was not a pretty sight, bro. <laughs> that man was cooked. 
And and the only thing that black people are talking about is fucking black jobs. That's the only thing you niggas is talking about. And I love this response right here. <laughs> but that's the only thing you niggas care about. It's not the cost of goods. It's not inflation. It's not about the fucking draft that they just implemented. It's about black jobs. And this is why I say, or this is why I've said before, unfortunately, the black demographic, we are politically inept. Instead of worrying about the cognitive decline of your leader, and the need to swap his ass out and get him up out of there and get this administration up out of here, they're talking about black jobs. What is a black job? Come on, man. We got to do better. We got to do better, bro. We got to do better. But I'm not making this video um, to tell you that Trump is the better option. Honestly, he's not. I don't think so. But to each his own, whatever you want to think, it, think it, think it. Um, but this system don't work, bro. Sorry to tell y'all that. It don't work. It don't work. This the this debate was for show. It was entertaining, but also was brutal to watch. Because you really see an old ass man up there just getting grilled and cannot respond. You know, but besides that, that, that concludes my video. Um, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, share my content. Um, I appreciate all the people that actually do, um, view my content, um, Besides that, man, y'all take care of yourselves. Y'all be safe out here, man.